Hello and welcome to Exanima, a super brutal, unforgiving game that doesn't really tell you a whole lot when you start it. And if you have any questions about it, well, you have to go looking online. And I found that a lot of the sort of guides and things were not really telling me everything I needed to know. So I wanted to make a guide that puts everything in one place. We're going to go through the first level together. I'm going to explain everything as we go along and you will be a pro by the end of this, okay? So first off, just change whatever settings you want to in here. For me, I'm just gonna turn that off. I'm gonna, you can show frame rate if you wanna make sure that you're getting your frames. Let's go into controls. This is the main thing here. I wanna change our cursor look to space. I wanna change our power bar to Z, my crouch to C, and lastly, alternate attack to E, and we are good to go. When we click begin, we're gonna have the option to choose a character. In this case, there's just gonna be unknown when you start the game. It's the only character that actually has the ability to do magic, so it's a good one to have. Um, just gonna make a name real quick here. I'm gonna name him Dirk, and I'm gonna start the game. Now over here, we have a couple options for clothes. If you go in naked, it's because you didn't drag any of these clothes on. Make sure you put these on. And here's the first kind of complicated thing. We have our skills. If we choose, let's say, repost, or repost, I don't know how to say it. And you also want to choose maneuvering. That went away. That's weird. Why? It's because we don't have any global experience points yet. This comes from repeated playthroughs of the game. And before we have that, we're just choosing which one we want to start working towards. So we can only choose one, which is, in my case, I'm going to go with repost. And let's go to next. Here is our spells. We have the options between mind, force, body, energy, light, and displacement. But as you can see, I can't select any of these. I can only select these two. It's because these are the only two schools of magic that are in the game right now. Force is a new one. It's a lot of fun. I can choose Torrent as the first thing that I want to learn first, as it says up here. But if I choose any of these, nothing happens. It's because I actually need coherence for Kinesis, and I need convergence for Bolt and so forth. So what are those? Those are skills. If we go back to the other screen, we can actually see here... Coherence is right here inside of Insight. So without knowing that skill, I cannot gain that spell. That's something to keep in mind as you move forward through your build in the game, that it is an RPG. You need to get the right skills to get the right spells. And some of these spells can be really, really powerful and a lot of fun. So don't sleep on that and just do the combat. The spells are really great. And I'll show you that in a moment here as well, as we do have access to at least one really great ability right, af right off the bat. So, standing up in the dungeon here with our beautiful locks of hair, um, we can grab this torch by left-clicking. You can drag it around. You can move objects wherever you want in the world. Hit I for our inventory. In it goes, or on our person to hold it. There we go. I'm going to drop that scroll. We're not going to be reading lore in this tutorial. Let's grab that, and now we have a plank of wood to fight with. But how do we fight? We can't fight with uh, the yellow cursor out. That's not combat mode. If we hit tab, though... Boom, we are now into combat mode. From combat mode, we have a lot of options. We can left click to swing. We can double click to do a downward strike. If you hold the button, it will keep going. And if you hold E and click, boom, you're now doing a stab, which is great on some weapons, really not great on a stick. So don't stab with sticks. Uh, as far as movement, right click will make you move around. If we hold shift, we'll sprint. And if we hit something like that, we will fall on our face. As you can see on the bottom of the screen, our yellow bar has gone down just slightly. That actually means that we took a bludgeoning hit that's not going to permanently hurt us. This will go back up to full. But if we take multiple of these hits, let's do it again. Ooh, if that bar went down to zero, we would be knocked out. And we would actually take a little while before waking back up in the dungeon. Which gives an opportunity for monsters to be standing directly above you and take you out when you go to stand up. So... Not a good thing. Definitely try to conserve that, that yellow bar, get it up to full. Here's our first enemy. The thing is, not every enemy is actually hostile. This guy, you can walk right around him. He doesn't mind. You're all good. Unless you swing at him, then he's going to have a problem. So let's go ahead and grab this first weapon in here. It's a bill hook. We actually have a primary and a secondary option for our weapons. So we're going to put this on our secondary. If we hit R, we'll switch back over to our primary weapons. If we double click the box again, we see we actually have a leather vest in here and a tunic. I think we can wear both. Let's drag them on. We can. Now we have a lot more armor on our chest. And uh, that if this guy hits us with the axe in the chest, we might not even take any, any damage. Maybe. We'll see. Um, so where did he go, though? He walked out here somewhere. Hmm. We don't know where he went. Might have gone up the hallway. <clears throat> 
There he is. So we go to we hit tab to go into combat mode. If I start the swing at him, boom, he's attacking now. Now as far as movement, WASD does move us backwards, left, right, and up. Um, but it only goes in the direction that we're looking. So left, right, down, up, all good. But if we start looking in a different direction, it can really start throwing us off. Right? Because it's always going to be going wherever our cursor is going or wherever our person is looking. So if I look up this way, I hit W, I'm going up this way now. If I look this way and I hit W, I'm going down. It's really crazy. So the best thing to do is actually look where you want to look, hit spacebar. That's going to move your camera to that side. And then all of your controllers are going to make a lot more sense to you. So follow the rhythm of the attacks. He attacks, we attack. Back up, attack right very simple as long as we keep that in mind that we want to wait till they attack move back get out of the way step forward and attack them these first enemies are not going to do anything too fancy you can just kind of move in and out and you'll have no problem so here is our first weapon we have a hatchet it has three balance which is pretty fast compared to what we were using before it's faster than it and it also has more damage with slash and crush so we're going to go ahead and drop this first piece of debris on the ground and we'll have this hatchet out instead. Let's go into this door and see what we have in store. That rhymed. Let's go. We have a woman with a sword. Not really a sword. It's actually a hand saw. We gotta wait for her attack to come out. And then hit her with our axe. Keep moving the camera in front of us. If we hit her with the hilt of the axe like that, it's not going to do much damage, right? So we have to make sure the spacing is just right in order to smash with the head of the axe. Um, if we look on the ground here, there's actually another hatchet sitting here. We can throw that in our inventory. This is actually a chain mail vest, a heavy mail vest, which is great. Pop that on there. We have even more protection on our chest. Our chest is super protected. Looking here, we have some leather trousers. We'll throw those on. It's probably better than what we had. Cloth trousers, they sure are. Moving over here, we have just a crappy handsaw. Don't worry about that, we'll keep moving. But the one thing I wanted to show you here as we, uh, as we move along is that both of our axes here, although they're both hatchets, they're actually different. You can see they physically look different. The one of them is shinier than the other one. But beyond that, you can see in the description, this is a decent hatchet in fairly poor condition. This is a simple hatchet in great condition. That means this was actually better made than this one when it was first made, but it's in worse condition, right? It's decent, this one's simple. This one's simple, but it's in great condition. So with that being said, this one has a bigger impact. It's heavier, you can see that here. Its balance is slightly less because it's heavier, it's a little bit slower. So I'm actually gonna go with the, the one that we already have on just for the speed. Um, that extra half a point of impact is not all that uh, amazing, I don't think. So let's just keep what we've got going on. But it's an important point to make that not all hatchets, not all swords, not all weapons in this game are made equal. They are procedural and they are all different. So you can find all sorts of amazing stuff. Move that debris right out of the way. Don't let that get in your way. Um, I mean, unless it just wants to be annoying. Let's just put it over here. That's fine. That's good. This guy's got a sledgehammer. We don't want to mess with that. If he hits us with that sledgehammer, that can be curtains. One or two hits with that sledgehammer, we can be out of this. Just want to be careful moving our camera so we can see where we're going. And just space out from that sledgehammer. Make sure we're not getting too close. It's actually a light source in this room. So we switch weapons, go to our bill hook so that we have more range, and boom, there we go. They are down for the count. <clears throat> so up here, let's get our torch back out. There's another chest. Double click on the chest to open it up. And we've got some leather gloves. Don't mind if I do. This thing is right in our way. Just move it out of the way. It's that easy. A couple more important points up here. Let's get this door open. You have to swing it open and move in quickly because there's somebody behind the door. Hello, how are you? Oh, you're not good? Okay, let's wait for their attack. Move in with our attack. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Let's hold right click and just move to this side of the room. Ooh, they hit us a little bit. We gotta finish this fight quick. We're all tied up. 
They did a little bit of red damage to us. What a miserable fight that was. We were stuck in this tiny room. It just did not go well. But that's okay. Now we can see that we do have some red damage. That red damage will not go away without a healing item. And if it goes all the way, we are dead and this character's run is over. That is a compass there. We put it in our inventory. We now have a compass in the bottom part of our screen, which will help us stay oriented in the dungeon and not get lost. Right? So that's really, really helpful. And also really helpful to not get lost is the fact that there are maps online that you can use. If you search examine a, examine a map, you will find this bad boy and you can see where everything is and where everything is in the map. A little, little bit cheaty, but you know, do what's fun for you. There are maps that you can find in the game as well, but there will not be, uh, you know, there won't be all the uh, extra items and stuff listed on them. It just shows you where the actual uh, rooms are, right? So <clears throat> definitely nice to have, especially if you want to find all the secrets and get all the fun stuff. Um, that is a good thing to have open and looking at. So let's go in this room. I'm going to grab this leather belt. Nothing else is really all that interesting. Mainly just looking for armor and weapons. Oh, I see where we are. Very good. Um, let's go up this way. You will get to a point where you kind of know the dungeon pretty well. And up ahead here is one of the very first uh, sort of puzzles in the dungeon. There are a few um, actually like platforming sections and some kind of puzzles. So in this room, if we open up this uh, lever right here, we will find that a portacles has opened on this side of the room. But to get to it, we'd have to run all the way around up those stairs, go all the way around and get in. And by the time we get there, we'll probably get the door slammed on us like that and either be dead or, you know, stuck or something and be terrible. So instead, what I like to do is I grab this here plank of wood. And I like to put it right over here. You can actually rotate with WASD. So I'm just going to put it right here. Up against that shelf. That'll probably work. Let's go give it a try. Move this debris out of the way so we don't trip on it on the way over. Start the lever. And right up here we go. Come on, let's go. Don't get stuck. There we go. Run, 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 run. Okay, we made it. No problem. Wasn't even close. The reason we come in this room is actually to get some of these goodies. So we've got a box. <laughs> That we can put stuff in. It's kind of nice. We also have a male shirt. But I think we actually already have a heavy male shirt or something underneath our... Yeah, there we go. We have a heavy male vest already. So the difference here is this one has a little bit more coverage. It has sleeves. Um, so other than that, uh, we'll see here. Um, coverage is a bit better. But everything else... Uh, it's it's kind of similar. Heavy male is a bit better. So, I mean, that's just a question for you, right? Do you want to have a little bit more protection on your arms or do you want to have better protection overall, right? Good question to ask yourself. For me, I'll stick with the uh, stick with the heavy one. Throw that stuff back on. I'm going to keep this in my inventory for now for a reason that will be explained very shortly. We are keeping some extra clothing items in there. Oh, just got our arm stuck a little bit. Oh, I just fell up the stairs a little bit. It happens to the best of us. Sometimes you just fall up some stairs. I mean, I find that you fall upstairs more than you fall downstairs in real life. Which is probably a good thing, realistically. I would rather fall upstairs than downstairs. So in here, on this guy's table, he has the very first important item being this key. Gonna grab that key for sure. Grab all of his clothes again for reasons that I will explain in a moment. Grab this buckler as well and get out of here. Let's go out here, up the hall. And at the end of this hallway, inside of this door just here, we're gonna find a man asking us, hello. This is Darren. Darren is our only friend in this dungeon 
and we are going to protect him with our life. Not for any real reason other than that it just actually makes things a little bit easier to spread the aggro out between yourself and one other person. So you can kind of double team your enemies. It doesn't really matter what you say to Darren. He will agree to come with you either way. So there we go. Darren is now on my team. Hit T to talk to him again. Ask him to see his equipment. And just like you do with yourself, you can slap all these things on to Darren. Get him dressed like a Barbie. And... <laughs> Also, we have this hatchet for him as well, so he can take that and not use this debris. And Darren's pretty well kitted up now. So let's just organize our inventory a little bit like so. And off we go. So down here in this room, there is actually two combatants ready to do a 2v2 against me and Darren, which is pretty great. I'll just tackle them a little bit just for funsies. Run back out the door. Darren wants to come with me. Great. I just want to fake this guy out with a fake swing. Will the other one come too? I don't know. Let's see if Darren can do some business here. Let's use our ability. Oh, I haven't used my ability yet. I think I'd hit Darren with that one. Oh, what a brawl. What an absolute brawl in the hallway. Darren, you might want to get out from the middle there. Clothesline that guy. Oh no, oh no, I fell too. Get out of there. All right. Oh, he's, this guy's trying to run. So the thing is, you can hit people when they're down. Just do a downward strike and follow it with a crouch. Okay, well, he's, he's gone. Let's leave him, Darren. So something I tried to do in that fight that I kind of... I meant to talk about earlier is we can use our powers as well. So in our P power screen, we can actually switch between force and mind. We can place things where we want them. I don't really want that ability there at all. I'm just going to stay in the force tree. And uh, once we have torrent, we'll be able to drag that up there as well. Once we have this screen on, we can hit enter to choose the uh, power we want and arrow keys to go to it as well. And now once we have it on, we can hit Q to uh, push people around. In this room with the two bodies, look under the table. There's a key. In the corner, there is a door for that key. To use a key, double click on the key, then click the door. And we're in. Pretty much every locked room has a better chest in it than most other places. So there we go. We've got some shoulders now. We're looking pretty great. That's the room we found Darren in, so we need to go this way. And we're moving already to the second half of the first level. We have a sliver of health missing. No big deal, that's okay. Because I'm going to show you how to find and use the healing items in the game. Now there's not a lot of them. You have to be very wary of using the healing items. You want to make sure you only use them if you absolutely have to. Uh, they will heal about half of your health pool, I believe. So kind of keep that in mind. This room kind of sucks, but there is a, a heavy lockbox in here. Let's try to use our spell again. You see that spinning move he tried? That was pretty great. All right, so there's some boots in here. There's some gauntlets in here. Were those gauntlets? Yeah, they were. Very nice. All right. This other stuff can just get dropped. It's no big deal. Let's keep moving. But yeah, the healing items, there's not a lot of them. There's only one on most levels. There's uh, two on a couple of levels later on, but for the most part, there's only one on each level. And some other are in uh, set positions that you can always... Darren, come on, man. This is the danger of having a friend, is sometimes they will bash you with their hatchet, which is not ideal. There we go. Let's run this guy over. This is a tackling move that you can do. Just run into them. That's how you tackle. Oh, Darren. Darren, Darren, my friend. You want to not attack Darren with your hatchet if possible. It's definitely not good for his health. <laughs> this has not been the best showcasing of how to use your uh, your teammate to the best of uh, their abilities, but that's okay. Let's talk to Darren again, ask him to see his equipment, 
So we can throw a belt on him. This other thing can go on the floor. I noticed as well we have a little uh, plus sign down here. But before we do that, look how many inventories uh, we have open here. So if we take a look at this, let's say we're looking at some items, comparing them, whatever. We want to close all the stuff at the same time. What I like to do, I hit tab and I hit tab again. So just double tab. We'll go back to normal. Very nice. Uh, but we have a skill ready to go. So let's go ahead and press K. We can see we have repost finished. Um, let's say we want to start building up uh, to get kinesis next. We would need coherence. So let's go ahead uh, and start learning coherence so that when our spell is done, which will show up in the bottom right as a, a spell being ready to go with a little blue, ch uh, blue cross, then we will be ready to go with coherence, right? Here's a guy with a sledgehammer. He's dangerous. Knock him over. Oh, man. I didn't get him while he's on the ground. But his sledgehammer is tied up behind his back, so... That's a weird thing that can happen occasionally. Oh, I hit him right in the face that time. Alright, this one makes fire turn on, so be aware of that. Don't want to roast your uh, roast yourself. Bit of a hidden path here. Make sure you come up this way. Just gonna run this man over as well. Back it on up. Oh, just bashed him. Very good. Okay. Moving along. I'd, f I'd like to find a better weapon than this hatchet, but, you know, for now, it's doing the trick. I think there's going to be one more enemy up here. There sure is, but there is a light source over here, so we can actually use our other weapon. Now, actually, see how dark it gets? That's the thing. You have to be really aware of just how dark some of these areas can get. Is that Pelagra on him? He's coming. <laughs> All right, well, I didn't even get to use my bill hook. Thank you, Darren. Let's move along. Okay, maybe I can use my bill hook in here. Just to kind of show how that works. Look at that range on the bill hook. Great range, and look at that. Now we have some red damage that we actually have to heal, so that's really good. Oh, this guy actually has a key. Would you look at that? I actually don't know what this key goes to. I haven't uh, used that key before. That's really interesting. It's probably... Huh, I actually don't know. I might have to look that one up. Anyways, let's just keep moving here. We are well into the second half of the first floor. And we're coming up on a very important item here in a moment. Okay, that's it for that guy. That guy docile? Yeah, we'll just leave him alone. Okay. Let's put our torch back on so we can actually see where we're going. And right here in this room, you might see something glowing. If you see this blue glow anywhere, that's a good sign. That is our very first healing potion. So throw that in your inventory. I mean, sometimes you even have a box you can put it in. This one's too small, I guess. But sometimes it's nice to kind of uh, organize your inventory a little bit with some boxes and pouches and things. Feel free to do that if you like. Um, but anyways, that is a pretty important uh, item because... And usually, I wouldn't use it till we have half of our health missing. But I'll just show you for demonstration purposes. Double click it. Click yourself. And you can see it doesn't really look like it did anything at all, right? But our health pool is going to slowly start going back to fully yellow instead of with that red in there. So that is going to help us stay alive. It's actually going already. This area is all kind of um, closed in. We want to just go ahead and finish out this first level. There's one other item that we want to keep our eyes open for, but I don't know if we're going to run into it in this uh, this little short playthrough. So I don't want to just loot every single box, which is normally what I would be doing. I'd be going into every one of these areas, looting all the boxes. But in this case, I'm just going to kind of go to the end. It's something called an orb. It's a blue sphere that you're going to run into. And it works the same way where you double click it and then you can click one of your items in your inventory. And what it will do is it will actually bring that item back to full uh, 
quality. So however the item was made won't change. So if it says it's like a decent axe, it will stay decent, right? But if it's in crappy condition, it will make the condition back up to flawless. Which can be really, really nice if you find a very nice item that's just in bad quality, like it's all rusty. You can make it uh, super sharp again and do a, a ton of damage. So look out for those blue orbs. You want know, blue orbs and blue potions. But with that, we are finishing off the first level of Exanima, moving into the second level. And that will end this video. I hope you learned something from this video. If you have any questions, you can definitely hit me in the comments. There's lots to know in this game. But the main thing to keep in mind is just to be careful with your movement and your attacking and combat. Make sure you're keeping spacing. Look for those health items. Upgrade your spells when you can and your abilities when you can. And have fun crushing the enemies in the dungeon. Thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.